Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Sharp Weekly. In this video, we're going to look at the new task modifier in iOS 15 and Xcode 13. So let's go ahead and get started. One of the things that you will notice in iOS 15 and Xcode 13 is that you can create a task modifier with any kind of a different view. And it has many different overloads. You can simply pass in the code, you can pass an ID, this is a dependency, which we're going to talk about later, and a particular action. The whole point of a task modifier is if you want to perform some sort of an async operation or you want to wait for an operation that is async, you can simply do this inside the task modifier. And the task modifier is going to get called when that particular view is loaded and it will be canceled when that view is disappeared. So let's say that in this particular scenario, I want to perform a task modifier to get a to-do list or just the to-do item. Well, first of all, I need some sort of a function that will do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a function, which is private function get to-do. And we're gonna use async throws, and we are simply getting one single item. So I'm just gonna decorate it or return string. Now you can use any service that you want. I'm just gonna use JSON placeholder to get the item. Okay, so there are a couple of different things going on. Right over here from line 13 to 15, we are making sure that the URL is, is correct. If the URL is not correct, then we are going to go ahead and throw an error, which is called bad URL. Later on, on line number 22, you can see that we have also used a brand new data function of the shared URL session, which is marked with async, so we can await on it. So if you have to write this again, it will be URL session dot shared dot, and you can see that we can simply pass the data or call the data from a particular URL. We don't really care about the delegate for now. And there we go. It's gonna get the data and it's gonna decode it into a to-do item, which we don't have. So let's go ahead and add the to-do item. And then it's simply going to return the title of the to-do item or an empty string. Now, since this particular function is marked with async, I can await on it. And one of the things you will notice about this task modifier is that if I go ahead and call this, let's say task, you can see that I can await inside the task modifier because it is already marked or decorated with async keyword. And since it is using the async keyword, I can perform an action inside the task modifier when the text view is loaded. So what I want to do, I can go ahead and call get to do, but since get to do is marked with async, I can await on it. And this can also throw an exception, so I can do something like that. This is going to return me a to-do item or probably the title of the to-do item, which I can get that. Now still, there are some issues over here. You can see that the try can cause a problem. I can go ahead and wrap this in a do catch block and I can go ahead and perform the catch. And if there's a catch, I can go simply and print out the value. Now, another thing that to keep in mind over here is making sure that we are updating our task title. So let's go ahead and create a property, which will be task title. And whenever we get the task title, we can update it. Oops, not task, but task title. Since the task title is a state property, whenever you get a particular item, particular title of the task, and it is going to set the task title, we can go ahead and display it. Let's go ahead and run our application. And if everything is working fine, we should be able to see the task title. And there we go. So this is one of the most common uses if you are using the task modifier 
inside the task modifier, you can perform a request. Now, keep in mind that I have created the request right over here in the view, but it is a good idea to move these requests into an actual web service and use some sort of a pattern like a Redux pattern or MVVM pattern or MVC pattern to create a more layered approach. So this is one of the uses of the task modifier. Let's go ahead and take a look at another very important use case for the task modifier. I'm going to go ahead and remove this particular code. I'm going to go ahead and add a text. So what we're doing is we're trying to build a counter example. So I will have a button over here and it will say increment. Now there are many different ways of creating the counter, but in this case or in this particular approach, I want to show you that how you can perform the task modifier when something actually changes. Let's go ahead and create a state property to hold the counter value. So I'll just say count, which is integer, it is zero. And let's go ahead and simply display this property. So we will just display count. And in the increment, I can go ahead and increment the count. So I will simply say count plus equals to one. Okay, now if I use the task modifier over here, there is a overload function for the task modifier, which allows you to pass in a dependency. What does dependency actually means? Well, this actually means is that any time the count is going to get changed, the body of the task modifier is going to get invoked. So anytime the count is going to get changed, the body of the task is going to get invoked. Also, the body of the task is going to get invoked when the view is loaded. So a couple of different ways it can get invoked. Anytime the count changes, it can get invoked. And the first time the view is loaded, then it can get invoked. So I can go ahead and print out the value of count over here and see if it works or not. I'm gonna go ahead and run this into a simulator. So we should be able to see that what it is displaying. So let's see our, okay, so it's loading. So let's go ahead and see what it actually loads up to. When the first time it loads the text view, the task modifier gets called and you can see that it displays zero because there is a print statement over here and the body of the task is executing when the ta text view is loaded for the first time. But since there is a dependency on the task modifier, which is saying that any time the count is going to get changed, also invoke the body or execute the body of the task, if I go ahead and click on the button, which is right here, it is going to increment the count. Incrementing the count basically means we're changing the count. And since the count is changing, it is also going to invoke line number 38. So let's go ahead and try to invoke the count. And you can see that every time the count is actually changing, it is calling the body of the task. So what we have done is we have created a dependency on how the body of the task is getting called. The body of the task is getting called the first time the text view is getting loaded, but it is also getting called any time that the value of the count is getting changed. Now, this is very similar to use effect in React. It's actually identical to use effect. One of the things in use effect and in React, what you can do is you can pass an array of items as dependencies. So let's say that I have another thing over here. I will say state private var, and I would just simply say name. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and add another button, change name, 
and inside change name, I will simply go ahead and change the name. So whatever the name is, go ahead and assign a different name together. It doesn't really matter what you're assigning, you're just changing or A, 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 whatever. You're just changing the text. We also have to make sure that this name property is displayed somewhere because if you're not displaying it, it's not gonna do anything. Okay. So right now, you can see that if I change the name, it's going to simply append A to it. If I change the counter, it's going to append the counter or increment the counter. The body of the task is only going to get called when you change the counter. Let's go ahead and run this. I mean, we didn't really change much of the code. If you change the name, it's not really going to fire the body of the task. So let's go ahead and increment. Okay, so you can definitely see that this line is actually getting executed. But what about if I try to change the name? Hmm, you can see over here, nothing is going on. I mean, the body of the task is not getting invoked. And the reason is simple because the dependency is on the count state, not on the name state. Now, if I go ahead and change this to name, then yes, it will get called when the name changes, but now it's not gonna get called when the count changes. What if I want both of them? I want when the count changes and when the name changes, go ahead and execute line number 39 or the body of the task. I can do maybe something like this. Well, you can't because this is not really JavaScript or Ruby on Rails or different or Ruby language. You can't really create an array with two completely different types. The count is an integer and name is a string. So how can we accommodate this problem? Now there are many different ways of doing that. You can create an array of any and then you have to do casting and all those things. One of the other ways is creating an enum because enum is a struct or value type and making sure this is equatable. In the enum, we can go ahead and create a count case and we can go ahead and create a string case for the name. Now, if you want a dependency on the count and you want a dependency on the name, then go ahead and call the dependency or pass in the dependency dot name or count and then pass in the name. Same way you can add a dependency on the count and in this case, simply pass the actual state value for the count. Now, let's go ahead and print out the value of the name and the count whenever any one of these things changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And now what I'm gonna do is I can go ahead and say increment and you can see when I'm calling increment, this is changing. When I say change name, it is also changing. Cool. So now we have multiple dependencies uh, as what we can pass to an array. So there you have it. Now you have learned about the new task modifier in iOS 15 and Xcode 13. Now one other question that you may have is, hey, what will happen to on appear? Well, on appear is not really going anywhere. It will still exist in the Swift UI, at least for now, or even for the future. There are no plans of removing it. On appear is a little bit different from the task because on appear is not asynchronous. Meaning that if you want to perform a, a wait, a wait inside on appear, you may have to use help from async closure. And if you're even doing that, then maybe a task is a much better choice. Also on appear doesn't really come with any dependencies or dependencies array. Just like you can see in the task, we are passing dependencies, which makes it very different and you can call the body of the task closure based on if the dependencies are changing. All of this is very, very familiar, very, very similar to React and the use effect. So if you have done any React development using uh, functional based hooks components, then you should be able to identify all of these things. Hope you really like this video. Thank you so much. Hey, if you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my Udemy courses. You can check out the link, you can find the links 
in the YouTube description. And I have a lot of different courses on many different aspects of technology, including GraphQL with iOS, Core Data in iOS, Swift UI, MVVM Design Pattern, Combined Framework, Rx Swift, and it goes on and on and on. I am always working on some new courses. Uh, check out my existing courses and please take a look at the links in the YouTube description. Thank you so much and I hope that you have enjoyed this video.